Sporting Snacks. What it do, Snacker, Snack S, and Snack X's. It's your boy Gage. I'm here with Sam. We got two special guests, Adam and Jerry, the franchise dealer. Yeah, time, Sam, for another episode of Spoiler Boys! Spoiler Boys! Now, check this out. We are doing things a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Normally, you get the two of us, you get jokes. Maybe jokes will show back up. We have already done a recap of episodes one, two, and three for X Men ninety seven. Today we are here to do our recap, full spoiler feelings all the way out <laughs> uh, for episodes four and five. Going forward, we will hit individual episodes until they get done. Um, but we thought it would be awesome to have some special guests on with us to do this now. None of you who are who are familiar with Loading Snacks should feel like either of these gentlemen are strangers to you. You all know Adam Butler. <laughs> He's been on plenty of content with us. Yeah. Um, and and we love to have him. The Butler did a podcast. Adam, briefly tell the folks, you know, yeah. who you are, what you got going on, where they can find you. We'll recap that at the end as well. Yeah, yeah. MSR underscore Adam on all social platforms. Um, I'm the host of the Butler Did It, of Sneaks in the City, and the What Are Those podcast is going to make a, a grand return at some point very soon. Uh, follow me on the Butler Did It podcast pro on YouTube. My man. And uh, the other gentleman who was here, Jerry the Franchise Gaylord, has also done a bunch of content with us. <laughs> Um, Jerry is one of the storyboard artists for X-Men 97. So we thought it only makes sense to have him here with us to talk about wow. what it is we're talking about. I, Jerry, I'm going to be honest. I'm not really looking to get some insight. I'm not looking for scoops or none of that, right? I uh-huh, wouldn't do you uh-huh. like yeah. right, You know what right. I'm saying? But I do think an insider's perspective is important. Um, so again, just look, same thing Adam did. Tell the folks where they can find you, what you got going on, and again, we'll recap it at the end as well. Sure, sure. Um, um, like like you said, I'm Jerry the franchise Gaylord. You can find me on uh mostly on Instagram. You know, I, I post pretty regularly. Um, although like recently I've been like super busy, so I haven't I haven't posted as much. But um uh, you can find me on Instagram, the franchise with the Z. Um art and then uh you know in in general just google jerry gaylord you'll you'll find me i'm i'm the one (laughs) my man said 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 like a true pg county native (laughs) (laughs) you know what i'm saying um so look i would introduce sin to you but i don't need to y'all already know who i am so it is look at the hands we're going to get into episode four. Um, again, and then episode five. Try to contain your feelings. <laughs> we're talking, we're talking about, right. We're talking about it's, it's all about episode four right now. That's yeah. It. It's all about episode four. Um, so episode four is an interesting. Uh, I kind of I want to call it an anomaly, right, of a show. Like every now and again, you will have an episode of a show that does something a little different. Like maybe a show that is not normally known for does an episode where there it's like a musical, right? They do something that's kind of a little different, okay. you yeah. know, something along those lines, right? Mm-hmm. I kind of consider that what this episode is to an extent. Um. In this episode, we really get, look, if you're at all in a place of nostalgia for this show, which all of us are, Mm -hmm. but also we got to remember that there are people who don't have the same touchstones that we have that are consuming this content, right, for the first time. They also might not be people who ever played an arcade game, let alone (laughs) the X-Men arcade games at all right so you know i'm gonna keep it a buck this joint was poking at my nostalgia like (laughs) all my nostalgia buttons yeah 
was like really, really pushing it. Like I couldn't, mm. I'm watching this joint and I'm thinking MAGFest is going to be crazy this year because mm. the entire Colossus roar at MAGFest, which like, if you don't know what that is, yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's so MAGFest is the music and gaming festival that happens every January right here in the nation's capital hmm. right it's it's and it is a a video game centric festival that is also very very focused on music and if you've ever been to one if you ever go you will hear this thing where people will just erupt into this like, like, and then people just do it and it happens and it rings throughout the entire convention center mm -hmm. over and over again. Right. It's and it's the cool craziest. Experience. And then you will see signs that are up throughout the hallways with like, you know how they tell you don't do something that's like the red circle with the red line through it. So they have those posted and it's a picture of Colossus from the <laughs> X-Men arcade game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With his arms open, right? Doing that roar. Doing that roar. The Colossus roar is yeah. is the is like the signature thing of Magfest, <laughs> right? And if you ask what the story is, it is that when Magfest started like 20 years ago and the entire festival was like one room, they had all the arcade games set up. The X-Men arcade game is so loud and people were playing it so hard that every time someone did the Colossus roar. In yeah. the game, you would just hear it erupt and ring throughout the entire space. So people started to mimic it and right. copy it. And so it's just a thing that has continued throughout. So when you go go to MAGFest, as you're walking around, just randomly, somebody will do it. And when somebody does it, you're just supposed to do it. So yeah. everybody does it. And I'm just like, yeah, this is the kind of touchstone that X-Men the arcade game has. To see that brought to life in this kind of animated fashion, one, was incredible for me. For the rest of you, mm -hmm. I, I'll start with you, Sin. <laughs> what does that do for you? Man, that put a big smile on my face. That's what it did, seeing that. And the first thing that popped in my head was I thought about you, and I was like, hey, when can we get one of those 2D fighter remakes that we be mm -hmm. into. It's like, can we get this, please? And put Jubilee in it and add some of some of the other X-Men in it. Like, can we get this now? Please. I wanted that so bad watching that. But yeah, all mm -hmm. those nostalgia points hit 100 percent when I saw the pixelated characters in the game and everything. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay, y'all doing something with this. Adam, yourself. I mean, listen, I remember walking up to the arcade near Forestville Mall and playing the X-Men arcade game. And yeah, the nostalgia points were on 100. I felt like it was very intentional for that episode. Yeah. Um, I felt yeah. like it was intentional for that character um, and for the audience. I felt like this was the one episode that was like, okay, we're going to touch on these points to teach you a lesson while teaching Jubilee a lesson. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. preparing you for what's coming next week, which again, we'll get to later. <laughs> Um, yeah. you know, we want to give you the, the feels yeah. for this one, and you feel like I felt like this episode felt more like a Saturday gave me more of the Saturday morning cartoon feeling than any of them have, yeah. and that's a good thing. I'm not saying yeah. that it was a, actually is a nice change of pace for half of the episode, so yeah. Um, I had all the feels watching uh Mojo and the arcade game yeah. and a little touch of the Sega game, too. All of it, it was, it was yeah, yeah, Jerry. When I talked to you, I don't know, last week, um, you specifically told me that this is the episode that you did the most work on. Is that right? Wow. <clears throat> um, yeah, Something this like one. And, yeah, this one and uh, the next one. Mm. Okay. So yeah. this, so episode four and episode six or four and five? Four, four and six. Four and six. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, for you... I mean, look, obviously, you know, you've worked on other stuff and we've had conversations before about getting it from the storyboard point to then seeing it on screen. How does that translate like from like the nostalgia for us? Was that there as you're storyboarding it? Does it feel different when you watch it? How does that how does that kick in for you? Um, 
Man, I think, <laughs> so like when I read the script, and I saw what was going on. I was just like, oh, like we're doing this? Like, this is about to be crazy. Because I I, <clears throat> I feel like I had, um, when I was a kid, like I had seen the X-Men yeah. um, up, up until the point when the game came out. Like, I, I remember I had seen the X-Men and I kind of was vaguely aware of what they were. But I, I was telling somebody else on a, on a different show, like, um, besides like Spider-Man and the Hulk, I always felt like Marvel was, please excuse me. I always felt like Marvel was like super, super um, like generic, mm. right? So yeah. if you can you imagine like a DC guy. Yeah, I mean, I, I was like, I, I was Superman really into that. Well, <laughs> well, like, hold, hear me out though. Hear me out though, right? So like to me, like I would look at like, like take that take cyclops you know at yeah. that at that time like he you know he's wearing like the hood he's got the visor and the underwear but his outfit is like super basic mm, and yeah. I've, I've always felt like a lot of um marvel characters are kind of wearing green lantern's outfit but in different colors if that okay. makes any sense to you right okay um but like that game was like my my first real introduction to the x-men like at all um wow. okay and and like the game was crazy you know like the the colossus roar like i've never been to magfest but like i know it mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it's yeah. it's a whole thing um and the, the game itself was beautiful and so you know it, it really hit and then um you know uh after the animated series came out and i was like really on the x-men like i was i was on x-men so like all the other games I had played them, I had loved them. And so to see that we were gonna like take this on, uh, like it was crazy. Like it was absolutely yeah. crazy. And so um, you know, like the the process was pretty collaborative. And okay. so like the um all the, the different ideas that we all had, like they went in and so much of it ended up on screen that is crazy like uh the i boarded um one of the scenes that i boarded is like when they're in the game and then uh they get up to sauron yeah so like yeah like i i boarded like that section um right there and like that was like really cool actually it was in the boards this is, it was longer than that and like it, it got okay. cut so like I had even boarded a, a scene because I, I really wanted it to look like the game, right? Yeah. So like they're like you notice like they're in the savage land and like they're fighting these like basically Sauron dudes. Yeah, and then like that I, I had, then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 right. And then so like I had them like slide in and like have like a word balloon that said their name. Like it was it was crazy. So basically, um seeing 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 it in the script, like working on the boards. And then finally, two years later, like seeing it like completed and fully realized was, uh, it was pretty outstanding. It was amazing. Awesome. I dig that, man. Um, outside of nostalgia, let's talk a little bit about the episode itself. Um, I mean, I'm not like on a let's go like scene by scene, point mm -hmm. for point you know kind of kind of place what i what i want to do is talk about the character development um jubilee as a character um is technically the main character of the show when the original show starts mm -hmm. in that she is the person that the show is focused on to use to introduce you to this world. Right. She's new to it. You're new to it, maybe, right? And so who these people are, what kind of abilities they have, what is this Professor X, what are the X-Men, mm -hmm. all of that is really done through Jubilee's lens of, of this being an introduction for her and so she's used as that character to do that for you. And that changes more as the seasons go on. But 
her character seemed to kind of stop developing. And so in earlier episodes, when 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 you get to this point, it's like Jubilee is becoming an adult. Mm -hmm. She's turning 18, right? Mm -hmm. um, for them to put an age on that and then, to me, kind of play with the idea of having to come into adulthood. Mm -hmm. Turning 18, you're an adult. This is what I want to do. It's my day. Now, instead of Xavier, you have Magneto as the father figure going, yeah. nah, right. we're not playing games. We got to get ready for what's happening out here. The right. world is real, right? right? So there's that kind of a touchstone of like, nah, you're 18. Like, we got to, it's time to get it together. You know what I mean? Right. And go figure out what you're going to do. We got to, we got to be prepared for what real life is right now. Um, And then to take that and, and to have her show be done in a video game, which so often you're told that's a kid thing. Like that's mm -hmm. not for adults, right? So there's some development that's happening with her as she's reaching out to other characters to say, hey, it's okay. This is what we can do. Let me show you the ropes. And to get into a position where she's kind of coming into her own. Um, and I'm not even ready to get into like the reveal of the, like the older version of her coming yeah. back in with the original voice actor and so forth. Like, are you guys kind of in the same place as far as, you know, getting an opportunity to allow her to have some development as a character? Yeah. Yes. I think that as I mentioned earlier, and this is maybe just something I'm seeing art just may have hit me this way. Um, I really feel like if Jubilee was the intro to X-Men for a lot of us, and we were seeing, all the action through her eyes in a way, right? And that was very much on purpose. The original cartoon they tried to do in the 80s, they tried to do it with Kitty Pryor. So they always thought they needed a, yeah. a younger character to kind of like get the kids into mm -hmm. it. And now we're all grown up. And so now we aren't 18, but, you know, we are turning 18. We're adults right. now coming back to this show. And, and it's almost like the show is saying, okay, now it's time for us all this isn't X-Men from the year 1997. This isn't X-Men from the year 1993. This is X-Men in the year 2024. We're right. going to give you this one episode where it feels like a kind of like a funny, funky, Saturday morning, lighthearted cartoon, but really there's a deeper message in there. So I do think the char the character to do that and the v for that to be a vehicle through would be Jubilee. I think that was smart. Yeah. And I definitely felt that. Um, I didn't come out of it sad. Like I didn't come out of it like when her, when her character eventually had to grow up. I didn't come out of right. it like, oh man, I gotta grow up. But I did come out <laughs> of it like you know. But I did come out of it feeling like this show. If there were messages that the show was trying to convey in 94, 95, 96 that I was too young to understand, I was just watching Wolverine do his thing and Storm fly. Now I understand the messages of the yeah. X Men. Um. I think that just to, from a broader scope, I think that this show is the best representation of the X-Men on screen ever. I mean, and you I know, mean, I, I mean, love the movies, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know which I is, which is a, I, which can be a hard sell uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. to love the movies. That can be yeah. a hard sell. Yeah. Yeah, you know I, mean? I mean, I love most of the movies. You, yeah, we've had okay, okay, okay. Oh, there we go. There's some, <laughs> yep. some that are it up. Yeah, <laughs> but for the most part, I'm an X Men guy. Yeah, and so that particular section of the uh, of that episode really was on the nose, but in a good way. Like, yeah, this is different, and we're using this character that was the kid of the group to really show you to show her that this is different, and yeah. to show you that this is different. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a, it's been, they've been in the episodes leading up to this episode, but like really kind of being able to lean more heavily into some more adult themes, yeah. the way the comics did, yeah. Um, yeah. and the show maybe couldn't as much before. Yeah. Um, Jerry, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I, I think that like coming in, um, it was, uh, like it felt, 
I think working on the series, it was like, okay, so, you know, we, we, we had the original show and like this new show is, um, it's a, it's a baton pass. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, um, it's, it's those same characters. It's those same ideas, but we're, we're taking it forward. We are, we're, we're growing up with the audience. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, like I, Adam, I agree with you, um, completely, you know, like I think, you know, even when, when you're a kid and you're, you're like watching the show and like, you don't like get it, you know what I mean? Like all the stuff, but like, um, like working on the show, like I was, I was watching the original series a lot. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's a lot of like heavy stuff going on for, yeah. for like a, a kid's cartoon yeah. show. For a Saturday and, morning cartoon, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then, you know, we, we take all of that and it, it's all here. But now, you know, it's 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 moved forward. Like I think um Bo DeMeo, the the uh showrunner, I think he he really um he really understands the like the X Men in a really like deep way. Yeah. And um, you know, so like the 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 scripts would come in and like you know, a lot of it was just there. And then we're we're able to like take take those ideas and embellish and and bring our own experiences into it, you know, hmm. and not and not not dumb any of it down, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a lot of a lot of what it is. Um, is like not. It's like I don't feel like if you're ten and you're watching this. Yeah. I don't feel like it's too much for you. I feel like it's the it's that it hits the that great middle ground of like there are themes here that you're really not gonna understand unless you yeah. understand certain like and you know unless you're of a certain age or you've experienced certain things. Yeah, but you can still walk away with certain lessons from it. Mm -hmm. And do you have a favorite moment from this episode? No, not one specific moment. It was more so seeing the whole doing the whole arcade thing was yeah. a moment for me, and yeah. the older jubilee. Yeah, moment. that was a cool. Like that cool. was that was pretty dope. Like having yeah. having that moment. Those are like the things that stuck out to me the most that I just yeah. enjoyed. Besides the fact that things that are y'all saying that I wasn't necessarily probably picking up on when I was watching it because I had to watch it at yeah. work, so I'm trying to do multiple things at a time. Yeah, but I do like this show having the more adult themes kind of it feels like this was made for us like yeah they brought well, back yeah. our show you know what i'm saying yeah. but we've grown up so they've grown yeah. up the show with it but kind of kept it looking the same but more polished and better yeah. you know what i mean like so yeah. i do love and appreciate like going forward about what they're doing with this i really do to me it's like it's like a not to dote over the like the entire series so much but like mm -hmm. it's a perfect representation of the mcu when the MCU is working, it's X Men ninety seven. It's sure. something ten year olds can watch, but also adults are getting like gotcha. yeah. adult content from it. Mm, when yeah. the MCU isn't working, it's either too goofy or too. And, and again, it's thirty movies, thirty how many movies? Some <laughs> things are going to work, some aren't, right? But I just right. feel like X Men ninety seven is what we love about the MCU. Um, and yeah. even just a, just as, as a moment. Like even like the Mojo stuff, like that character when you see him as a kid, he's just like this goofy, like oh I want to put you in the TV and all that. But when you yeah. see you see the metaphor of him and what mm -hmm. he represents, and even that you know it wouldn't attack the social media angle because it's based in 1997. But even using the saying like you know what TV is played, we doing video games, ratings, now ratings, because, ratings, mm, yeah. ratings, 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 and he's getting bigger because of the ratings and all mm -hmm. these things you knew mm -hmm. about him, but you don't really remember honestly. Yeah, unless you yeah. read in the comic books on a regular basis, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, stuff you wouldn't, you know, otherwise relate. Yeah. Right. Um. You know, having having Jubilee meet herself, yeah, um, and get kind of that Doc Brown slash Marty McFly message yeah. from the future, your future yeah. self. You know that says, 
that's kind of telling you, hey, like, you got to get it together. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, there's some, um, I think is kind of a really special and important touchstone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, underlying is the idea of the original voice actor coming back to reprise mm-hmm. the role of Jubilee after having been offered the role, obviously, to do this and saying, no. Yeah. I want to make space for an Asian American woman Mm -hmm. to play this part, to, to do this part. Beautiful. Um, Yeah. Yeah. It just, look, if you don't know, you won't know. Right. right? Mm -hmm. But there is that it's strange to kind of see the baton get passed from yourself to yourself. (laughs) Yeah. 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 But it is your older self passing the baton to you and kind of letting you know, like you can, like you can do this. You, you you can make it. Um, So, you know, for me, this, this feels like a really good one-off, right? Where you're like, not that there aren't some really strange and wild things happening in this world. right? Right. Because it's, it's mutants, it's powers yeah. and abilities mm-hmm. and things that people can do that are just kind of like yeah. nuts. And Jubilee, I, you know, what she's gone through in the comics aside, like turning into a vampire right. and like all this other stuff. And even the way that they have expounded on what her powers and abilities are mm-hmm. in the comics. Mm-hmm. You know, look, man. In 92, 93, 94, like this character that is like, yo, where did they get this child from? Like, <laughs> yeah, fireworks from her hands, dogs. Like, she's yeah. the weakest. Like, who cares, bro? Like, I can remember having those arguments yeah. slash conversations in school. Like, all right, yo, if you picking your five, like, who's putting Jubilee on a squad? No, look how she was treated in the movies. Ooh. I mean, seriously, like, just a side runner. All, she was in the background sometimes in, in the class. You'd have to look go, oh, that's supposed to be Jubilee. That was Jubilee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. They, yeah. I mean, look, no doubt. look is iconic. Yeah. And even now, like to have it kind of get updated to where, like, I mean, you gotta remember, like, yo, we old, so like 90s yeah. is retro. Yeah. And like it's kind of like back in. So yeah. like they starting to dress the way we used to dress back then, yeah. which yeah. is like yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I just I think that this episode is an important episode because it almost feels like it's giving you like that last little bit of like, yes. all right, yes, the part, <laughs> the over. Y'all had yeah, y'all cereal? We finished yeah. it yet? at the top of the roller coaster right now because we're yeah, to- yeah, exactly. yeah, because we like <laughs> breakfast is over. Yeah, you about to train in the like we get off the, yeah. doing we're warning you get off the train right now. Yeah, I mean because <laughs> these next stops is gonna be a I mean, it was it was all there, you know, with Mojo telling her, like, hey, you know, the thing about the X-Men again, what we hadn't really seen cinematically because it's difficult to do them being a team, them working as a team. Mojo yeah. telling her, like, hey, it's really you the one, you're the cool yeah. one. You do it by yourself, her older self having to come in and they have to work as a team. Mm-hmm. She yeah. has to help, you know. Um, you know, it's just there's so much there and it's so on the nose, and, and that's a very difficult thing to pull off to be on the nose with your messaging to be like, you know, yeah. might as well hold a sign of yeah. hey kids, teamwork is important, <laughs> you gotta grow up one day, you know. Um, and to make it work. I, I was watching it with my wife. I watch all of them with my wife. Um, well, I watch my, my second viewing is we'll watch. I, I got to uh, watch. Okay. <laughs> okay. At, at home. All right. I was watching it with her. And she was just smiling like at, at the character Mojo, mm-hmm. at the progression of, of Jubilee. And I thought that was a good litmus test because that's one where it could have come off as corny. It could have been like, what are they doing? Why am I watching a video game? I'm a grown woman. Why am I watching this? But she was enjoying it because the messaging was delicate, but it was it was it was it was pulled off beautifully. So and I I, I love the first half of uh, episode four for sure. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it's all about like this. Oh, I go think ahead. it's all about go, character, go ahead, you know. Yeah, uh, like yeah. I like you're you're saying that um, like Jubilee 
you know, back in the nineties, like she was considered like the lame character. Yeah. I think that's definitely like true, but like, I always liked Jubilee. Like I, mm. I, I thought she was cool. I thought like, I enjoyed her character in the show. And I, yeah. I think um, what, what makes uh, any of the characters in the X-Men unique is that they are treated as characters, right? Mm-hmm. And so like in the movies where yeah. she's excluded, like yeah. I, I've always felt like she didn't have to be excluded, but yeah. like, you know, in the movies, like really they only make room for like Wolverine plus like two other characters. Charles and Charles and Eric. Right. Right. It's it's yeah. like it's really their movies, and then these other yeah. characters are just yeah. there. Um yeah. whereas here in the show, like like we had the opportunity to say, like, no, these are the X-Men. Yeah, you know, and yeah. like Th- this episode being like really jubilee centric like her her character you know like you say like she gets to grow up a little bit she gets to yeah. um we get to see that oh well you know we know people kind of thought of her as kind of lame but like really yeah. she she's not like look at they this. put some respect on her name yeah yeah they yeah. They, yeah. they put some respect on her name like it's yeah it's a i mean again bro like the X Men is filled with characters who are nigh unstoppable, right? When you talk about the actual power that Cyclops has, yeah, kind of bananas. Yeah, what Jean Grey can do, kind of bananas. Yeah. what yeah. Storm can do, kind of yeah. bananas. What yeah. Wolverine can live through. Yep. Kind of bananas. Like when you yeah. look at all of the rest of the characters that sort of, even technically, like what Morph can do. Yeah. Being able to like shape shift in the end. Like if I want to fly, I can just turn I can into use something. Your power. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Like what Rogue can do, right? Yeah. The, the suffering that she deals with, but what she can do, that kind of power, that strength, the flying, the speed, yeah. the like even Gambit. Like, yeah touch anything and turn that thing into just that kinetic energy. What yeah. Bishop can do yeah. with this most powerful thing you can. And I can take that. Yeah. I can turn it around and use it against you. And then it's like, Oh, Jubilee shoot fireworks out her hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't, look, yeah. Like not like there's no, like there's no two ways about it. Yeah. But she's still a part of the team. Right. Yeah. And it's like, I come from the old reading of the X-Men where it's like, you got people like Dazzler. Yeah. And it's like Dazzler. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, nah, she's doing Dazzler. what she's supposed to do. She's supposed to be a pop yeah. star. Like, yeah. She can turn sound into light. Like, okay. Yeah. I don't know what you do with that, right? Or right. how you inherently make that super cool, right? right? And it's much harder, I think, to do that with Jubilee. So you have to give her, you have to kind of show her grow up and evolve. Like the way that the yeah. older version of her was using her abilities are like, oh no, okay. hold tight. Yeah. Shorty's a threat. Yeah. I don't know if you want to, yeah, like, yeah. The whole point is that you're supposed to underestimate her. Yes. Because then when you're in the middle of it with her, you're not expecting her to put it down like that. Right. Yeah. And so that kind of that message of like, don't sleep on her because she doesn't have the same powers as them or that, right? Like, knowing yeah. what her position is, what role she can play. I just think the episode does a really good job of kind of like nailing all of that and telling you, nope, she's still important. It's still a big deal. Don't sleep. All right. It's this. It's, this. it's writing. It's the pen. Right? It's the writing, it's the right? Like the it's right. I, I mean, y'all know this. I'm a huge ice and fire guy, right? Yeah. And when when Game of Thrones Ice and Fire is working, is when even the smallest, weakest character is getting care. <clears throat> When it's not working, it's a Jon Snow sword show, right? Sure. Same thing with this. Same thing with the X-Men. When the X-Men work, it's not about the powers. It's about, it's not about the optic blast that Cyclops has. It's about the fact that he can't take his glasses off and how torturous that is for him. It's not the fact that Rogue can fly and punch. It's the fact that she can't touch anybody. And with this, it wasn't the fact that Jubilee had powers. It's how can she manifest them? How can Jubilee take the next step to catch up with it? And I thought, I'm glad we, I'm glad I'm able to start with this episode and this 
portion of the episode because it then it is again it is the most cartoony Saturday morning filling ish yeah. version of this show. It's not the big epics that every other episode has had, but it's probably the one of the more important segments of this yeah. series because it grounds everybody and it and it prepares everybody for what's coming next through this character that, like you said, a lot of us looked at and was like, oh, Jubilee, you know, the mall rat, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I thought that right. was, you know, that's just great writing. There's just no other way to put it. Yeah, the show has this way of kind of splitting up the acts and saying, yeah. okay, here's what's happening at the house. <clears throat> here's what's happening elsewhere. Like, yeah. here's what's happening with Storm. Yeah. So are we getting there? We go, are we going? Yeah, let's go. Let's, you know what I mean? Oh. That's what we're here for. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> I, you know, look, man. I'm, look, again, I come from the comics. So, like, yeah, I, you yeah. know, this whole Forge and, and, and Storm thing. Yeah. It's a big deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you knew, like, you yeah. knew it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah, this ain't gonna turn out. This this gonna be a problem. Yeah, I mean, like, this, this yeah. is gonna be a problem. Yeah. Um, Sin, how do you feel about how Storm is handling the loss of her ability? How do you feel like the show is handling Storm handling the loss of her abilities? I think for me, my problem with this episode was I don't like the two split ups of what okay. was going on with Storm and what was going on with Jubilee. I preferred. Either keep the story jubilee focused and let, let let's get into some more depth and something like that there, or to make it about what's going on with Storm losing the powers and Forge, because mm-hmm. it felt completely rushed to me. Because I didn't know okay. like, this stuff, and y'all broke it down to me last time when we talked. Like, no, that's mm-hmm. like a thing with them, yada yada. So okay, then when I see it folded, I didn't expect that to go all, all go through all that in the span of like 12, 15 minutes. I'm like, really? Mm-hmm. Like, right? We're doing like you just rushed through all that. Like what they were talking, I, I was cool with what it was. But disappointed because it was so short, and I expected something a little longer to come from that part of the story. So I'm yeah. a little bit disappointed in that. But as far as what they were talking about and all that stuff, I was fine with it. I was there's excited. a to be honest with you, that the Jubilee section of this compared to what happens in the comics, super short. Yeah. Like that whole run of like Jubilee getting caught in like Mojo's world and having to mm-hmm. like figure like that's a run. Like that it yeah. takes a long time. <clears throat> like there's a a serious amount of of development of character mm, development yeah. you don't get yeah. in seeing Jubilee become that older version of herself. Mm. Um, that in this you just get introduced to it, and it's like, oh, she's a badass. Like she, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so you only got so many episodes you can play with, and when so when they do something like that, I think this is why that didn't bother me. You know something major is coming when yeah. they take something that seems like slash feels like it should be as important as how <laughs> Roro. Let's yeah. call her Ororo. Ororo. Yeah. Cause without because without her powers, I don't know, she ain't storm. Yeah. Like you know, right. you know like, yeah, her name is Storm. Right. Like Ororo not... Monroe, bro. Let's just get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so <clears throat> how she is dealing with feeling like she's not even the same person anymore Mm -hmm. right because you're talking about again it's a compare and contrast so so you you end this episode with someone who is heartbroken in tears and feels like they are no longer themselves because they have happily accepted yeah what the powers they have been given are yeah right Versus what you get in the following episode in somebody mm-hmm. like Rogue, who yeah. is not in that same place because her powers are much more of the gift and the curse. Yes. Right. And that's one of the things I love about X-Men and how they, they do this. Right. <clears throat> For some people, it's just a gift. Yeah. For some people, it feels like it's just a curse. Right. And for others, it is a combination of the two that mentally yeah. they have to deal with. For Jubilee, yeah. it's really just a gift once she learns to have control. So like in right. the beginning of the show, she doesn't really have control. So she might accidentally do something that without <laughs> her as a 
and, and whatever. But she can, for the most part, walk around being a mall rat and play video games if she wants to. Right. And it doesn't affect her. She's not in Nightcrawler's shoes. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm. She's not in Scott's shoes. They're like, I control. can't even open my eyes. Yeah. Without destroying things. Without killing people. Harming someone. Yeah. I will like <clears throat> literally having this man talk about like not being able to actually see his son. Yeah. See mm. what his child looks like. Right. Because of he can't having to have this Ruby Quartz. Right. Yeah. So Storm being in this place where she's just as distraught about losing her powers yeah as other people are about <clears> having them yeah right that's tough yeah yeah it's yeah. hard to write and it's hard to do it in a small you know spat of time i would have liked to have seen it get a little more like, like you said sin mm -hmm. yeah um but when they do it short like that it's like oh, okay they're saving some of that for further down the road. Like, that's what yeah. that means to me. Like, let's kind of get, let me kind of get you here so you can see. Yeah. Oh, we have a problem. Yeah. That on top of a problem. We're going to deal with that a little bit later. Mm. Adam, where are you on it? No, I mean, the, 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 <clears throat> the whole storm storyline, the life death thing, obviously it's a whole run. I mean, they tackled runs. The Madeline yeah. Pryor thing. I mean, you know, we we you know these these are like social oh, so quick. Yeah, yeah. So I I I, I hear what you're saying, saying it, did, it didn't bother me, but I do understand <clears throat> wanting to breathe, live with this stuff for a few minutes. Yeah, and I'm, not, I'm not yeah. I'm not looking for like whole chunks of time or something. Yeah. Just a little bit more on it. Like I just felt like it was just a little bit too yeah. fast. That's yeah, I get yeah. it. I get it. But if you want just the, I have loved the idea. You know. I saw the titles of the episodes beforehand. You know, they, they put them out. So yeah, Life Death, yeah. and I was like, okay. Then I really realized they were going to do it from episode one because how Storm was, you know, Omega level th threat detected in <clears throat> right. form in all her glory. Like, we've never seen her on screen before except for the older cartoon, right? Right. So they were giving you all of Storm to bring her down. And I think that, again... That speaks to why the X Men are so cool, and why the show is so cool. Because you're taking a a, a a character who could eliminate, who could end the series right now if she's full power. Like whatever the problem is, Storm could handle it, right? Or Magneto could handle it, right? I can. Mm -hmm. So to see her grounded is um really cool. And then I also thought that the kind of yin and yang, uh, of <coughs> like the. Saturday morning cartoon feeling of the first half of the show, and then this mm -hmm. sort of like soap opera like drama of the second half of the show, where it, you know there's no real action to the very end. It's a man mm -hmm. and woman eating biscuits or whatever it was he was offered her, um, talking, you know, <laughs> he handed the biscuits, it was like, but um, talking, uh, going through it <clears throat> again. <coughs> It's like the first half was telling you now, let's get to the grown up stuff. That was like very like adult. I can't remember every episode of the original cartoon. Sure. Not I don't remember a scene like that happening in the original one. I could be one hundred percent wrong, but for me, I don't. And so I <clears> enjoyed <throat> it, and I also enjoyed where it ended up. Uh, but yeah, seeing Storm grounded, um, having her. I mean, you know, again, if you know the books, you know what happens. But having her um, <clears throat> at the beginning of that process, learning about Forge, giving Forge a character arc, one of my favorite characters, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I really, I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Jerry, what about what about for you um, in this episode where Storm and Forge are? Um, and, and, you know, how it's handled in terms of dealing with <coughs> the position that she's now in away from the only family she's really ever had, um, meeting someone who she's clearly beginning to like develop feelings for and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, but then also to have almost an immediate betrayal. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So, like, I think um, to to kind of address what Sim was talking about, like, I think, um, I I think Adam is right. Like, so it, I I think this whole thing, like, you you shouldn't think of it in terms of like. I saw this episode and this is what happened in this episode. Like these, these, all of these characters are on a journey. And so like you watch it from episode one and we're, you know, we're talking about episode four, they're not in the same place they were in episode one. Right. right. So there's like, there's this, this journey is happening. Um, we're you, at know, the I, you know, we're on our way, Yeah, you know, and, and, and right. And again, like, uh, like Adam said, this episode four, like this is life death part one. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. um, you know, we're we're getting there. And I, I feel like um saying you might feel a little a little differently about it, like if you like when this is all over and you watch it again, like all mm-hmm. of it. Pro- yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean there's um, there's more story to tell and see where everything is heading and going out of yeah. the episodes. Yeah. So. Yeah, because you know, it's like I feel like when you um when you're adapting like the X-Men, the X-Men is like convoluted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I actually, right? Like, so I read um, like the, this, the stuff that this is like based, based on, on, like while I was working on it and after. And um, like, I, it was like, I was aware of a lot of it, but it's, it's like Storm losing her powers. is not <clears throat> just like one it's not it's not even like a year long thing. It's like many, yeah. many, many like years mm-hmm. of of like story, you know. And I, I think that um like someone was detected at your my door. I guess my real introduction to like the meat of what's happening was from the script. So like it mm-hmm. made sense to me, like as yeah. I read it, mm-hmm. and I think as I as now that I know more, like I almost feel like <sighs> this might sound blasphemous. It's better this way. Like the I think the animated series itself, even the original one, was tackling like these huge stories, but like condensing them. Uh-huh. Um, and so it, it makes it more accessible, is 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 how I look at it. You know, yeah. it's like um they're they're doing like all this incredible stuff. Even like the Madeline Pryor stuff is like super complicated. It's super yeah. complicated. Yeah. And I feel yeah, like-, like if I had to try to explain <clears throat> to somebody, if somebody was like, Well, who's Madeline Pryor? Like, what's going on? Yeah. With that? If I had to like, like actually try to explain it to somebody, yeah. How much time you got? Like, that's what that's where yeah. you, you know what I mean? That's really where it is. Like a hundred percent. And the stories as they move go forward we get even more complicated you know oh, we're yeah. kind of dealing with one era of <clears throat> right now when they start yeah. getting to some of the stories from the late 90s to 2000s when they get into Krakoa and all these things that's going going on now are like you know insanity yeah, I mean yeah. to be honest with you what's happening in X-Men right now is so convoluted yeah um in the comics yeah. so like this yeah. like yeah again I do think that like there is something to be said for the fact that there is an understanding, I think a much better understanding now of what multi-channel is, right? Of, mm-hmm. of yes, we have these books, but we also have these movies and we also right. have this, this, these cartoons <clears throat> or these shows. And yeah. some of this stuff is designed to bring you into the world yeah. and mm-hmm. introduce you to the rest <clears throat> of it so you can go and seek out the additional information yeah. if you want. Yeah. But you can also just rest in just the show, yeah. just the cartoon, just in, yeah. in, in what it is. And that is, it's hard to do, but yeah. again, it's a much better understanding. If you take yeah. a nine-year-old who might be watching X-Men right. for the first time and really try to give them like, all right, though, so hold on. She's a clone <laughs> of the, of who? Okay. Right. <laughs> but, they, but they both got the same powers. But wait, but yeah. they got the same memories? Yeah. All right. So now, but wait. So, but Cable is who? Who baby daddy is Cable? Is right. Cable, Cable? Cable is so and so mother. If you right, yo, you can get so like yeah. it's so it's easy. Weird. 
yeah. yeah, to get lost in the sauce. That like, if you can imagine being somebody who knows this content, yeah, and watching it, sitting with somebody who doesn't, yeah. yeah. Very right, Jerry. This is the best. This is like the cliff yeah. notes. I'm this is like with, yes. This is like cliff notes with action, though. Like it's not like yes. oh, I watch it with my wife, and she's, I actually, she like, makes, I actually like, like the way you worded that. Yeah, I like yeah. That. No, I, I watch it with my wife, and she's again. She likes um uh, Marvel and comic. You know, she doesn't read comic books, but she likes Marvel and she likes X Men, and the Madeline Pryor thing, <clears throat> you know, was set up to confuse. I mean, the, the sure. original story is set up to confuse. She got it. It just had. She just had to ask like one or two questions. So wait a minute, that's her clone. It, yeah. Oh, okay. And it was. Yep. It was mm. there. You know what I mean? And like yeah. again, it kind of does some things on the nose, like a cartoon. What I laugh at myself because he watches like you know, he watches like the the more kitty anime stuff, and a lot of like yeah. it's a lot of like you know, I'm here to destroy your house, and I am the bad. You know, it's that like that stuff going on, and yeah. and you know, this show will do it in spots like. All right, you know, thanks for you know, we went through this thing together. You know, peace out, Gene. No, call me Madeline Pryor. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. that's yeah. for that's for you. That's inside, yeah, right. Like that's inside right. baseball. Like that's like yes. Like, where did that come from? Like you right. only you you will know that if you if you graduate from the show and then like you dive into the comics. There you right. go. Right. There right. you go. There you go. And that, and that, yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I will like tell I, you. I, <clears throat> oh, go ahead, go ahead, Jerry. Oh no, I was just gonna say, like, I, I really, um, like the the storm, the, the whole storm uh, portion of the episode. Like, I, um, I enjoyed watching it, like, cause I, I boarded um the scene where Storm takes her into his um his workspace and then he puts her in the the like power regenerator thing yeah, and then yeah. <clears throat> like on on through them uh being on the roof and like her realizing her power still don't work yeah, so right um like seeing that drama hit because i like i'm trying to think of like some cartoon that i watched where they did that you know because the action is like over until yeah, yeah. sort of like the cliffhanger and like they're yeah. they're really just talking they're having their moments they're yeah. like you know and <clears throat> like i i keep saying that like you know because i in the um when we were like i don't i don't remember the episode being split up like this when we worked on it i could be wrong I don't. So <clears throat> it was kind of like a, two years ago. So like, yeah, it was like literally two years ago. Yeah. Like, but yeah. I, I do remember watching um, the animatic, and like it, you know, it'll have like scratch records. So like, it's not the real actors. It's like us, like the artists, and yeah. the, you know, like we're we're doing the voices. And so like you're watching it, and like you get it, <clears throat> you're like, oh yeah, this is working. <clears throat> but like a lot of times. Um, for me, like a lot of the the emotional stuff doesn't like it. It lands, but it doesn't land with the power of a, like a real actor delivering the yeah, lines. Yeah, so, like to to see all of that stuff like actually like fully animated, and then mm -hmm. like like that was really powerful for me. Very I cool. got you. Um, before we move into episode five. I just want to say that anybody who's been following Loading Snacks for a long time probably knows that I'm not a Cyclops fan. <laughs> <clears throat> um, Sin is not either. Not even yeah. close. And we've already discussed, like, when we did the whole first three episodes joint, we talked about, like, all right, look, they really uh -huh. tried. <laughs> go ahead, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> like, go ahead. Hey, that's fine. Go ahead. 100% with the straight visors yeah. on deck. Yeah. Ready to go. <laughs> I'm not mad at all. And I know you are a Cyclops fan. Here's the thing. Even though I know what Cyclops has gone through as a character in the comics, it I didn't care. I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't care. Didn't care at all. Like I like I just didn't care. Like even like X Men vs Street Fighter, 
I don't care. Beat that dude up. I'm gonna okay. pick that. That's my yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, you know what I'm saying like I'm not even yeah like, and I'm not saying I never picked him or used him or whatever, but I'm just saying like I just didn't. Right. I just don't. But I like Cyclops a lot more right now, not because they're like animating him moving himself across the room using his optic right. blast or saving himself from a fall using his optic blast that's mm -hmm. not right. it i've always had a little bit of that like i get it you feel like you need to please the professor so you're in that place where like the professor kind of put this pressure on you you need to be the leader and whatever and i've always kind of put cyclops and like leonardo from the ninja turtles in the same bucket Right, like I don't, yeah. I'm not, I don't really bang with Leonardo either, right? But, <clears throat> bro, I'm gonna just tell you, dog, to try to put myself in the mind space of being the man who slept with the clone of your <laughs> wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not even sure which one you got married to. Yeah. <laughs> You do know which one of them is the mother of your child. Mm -hmm. That's not the one who's here. Yeah. And like she beefing with you because you like brain cheating. Yeah. <laughs> like is it like and like I don't even know if you really love me. Do, do yeah. you really remember me? Yeah. Am I really the do, like do you love me or do you yeah. just think you're supposed to because you think you have a memory of who yeah. I bro hey, she came up bro, with, she ran me, up on Scott like she went through his phone and found something yeah what are you kidding bro <laughs> that, was, that is exactly <laughs> what this was bro yeah, you, if, this, if this was X-Men 2024 <laughs> that's yeah. what yeah. my man yeah. Yeah. she found a snapchat yeah. 100% dog like yeah like this but like even still if that was the case, I might be like, hey, Scott, you wrong. You ain't supposed to be texting nobody else. Yeah, yeah, In yeah. this case, I'm like, mm. I, I get why you <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. know, bro. Yo, like, my man, said, what you saw on the astral plane was, was confusion. <laughs> <laughs> who, who says that? Let me yeah. get closer. Look, who can say right. what you saw on the astral plane? <laughs> <laughs> Who has that marked down on their excuse yeah. board? <laughs> like only the X Men, caught, only in the world of the X Men, you can get that yeah. on the world of Marvel. Yeah. You got caught brain cheating. Yeah, and for real, dog. <laughs> like I'm in his feelings yeah, right yeah. now, dog. Like I'm with you, Scott. Like yeah. I mean, for real, dog. Yeah. Blast everybody! Yep. <laughs> like, yep. like, she is literally. And, and listen, my and they just like, yeah. sent your son to the, to the, to the listen to the future. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. sent Slim away, so like, yeah. and you ain't never get to see him. Yeah, hold on, dog. <laughs> yeah, hold on, bro. I'm really like in this place where like I don't respect Cyclops as a leader. <laughs> I don't respect Cyclops as a decision maker. Mm -hmm. I don't respect Cyclops as a Boy Scout. Yeah. But as a husband, boyfriend, yeah. father, <laughs> Count cheater, Count I'm Count in your pocket, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, Count I'm on your side. Like, right now, dog. Yeah. Like, hey, like, hey, Gene. Yeah. You went too far, bro. That's yeah. an invasion of privacy. <laughs> like, yeah. you, don't, you, don't, you don't get to do that. Let that man oh. talk to his baby mother right quick, man. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Like, yo. Yeah. Hey, Real talk. Together. How can you have baby mama drama? Yeah, in the astral plane, creeping in the astral plane. Yeah, there's nobody going through what that man going through. Hey, and so you know the best. Oh, go ahead. I'm respect, sorry. Respect, yeah. dude. Don't like just hey, I, hey, yeah. And the best part of that whole sequence was <laughs> after Gene breaks up the the astral plane. Emotional cheating. Uh huh. She's on her count on the council, and oh, Madeline, you okay? Oh yeah, no, just a little brain slip. And <laughs> Emma Frost goes, a brain slip mm -hmm. indeed. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
again, because I have publicly denounced Cyclops. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not like, don't, this is not me. Like, I'm not endorsing Cyclops for president or for leader of the <laughs> expert or whatever. Bro. Yeah. But I'm saying as a human, as a man, this is a, this is a very mutant problem that yeah. a man, the very man part of him has to deal with. Yeah. Like yeah. the very human person mm -hmm. part of him has to deal with that nobody else mm -hmm. can be in those shoes, which for me mm -hmm. is so X-Men. Yeah. It's so X-Men because X-Men is so much about your night crawlers. Yeah. The person who is a visual representation of their abilities, mm -hmm. the Morlocks who can't mm -hmm. hide from yeah. what they look like yeah. and get away from it, which is so black people in America yeah. across the world, right? Like it is yes. it just it is that, right? And so, like in this moment, it's probably the blackest I've ever felt like <laughs> like, I'm just, hey. like, it's, like I'm just trying to say, like, listen. <laughs> Cause Gene went through his through his phone, basically. Baby mama drama, <laughs> just yeah. like like yeah. it's hood life right now for yeah. Cyclops. Girl. Yeah. Like, my yeah. man's ready to go off and commit some like one eight seven and just like I like yeah. the kind of anger that the 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 anger, the doubt, yeah. the confusion, yeah. the like all of that 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 person yeah. is dealing with. The kind of anger that makes you go, mm -hmm. hey, for real, y'all lucky y'all alive. Y'all lucky I'm yeah. not like y'all. Yeah. Because that's the only reason why y'all alive right now. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I fry everybody in this joint. For yeah. real? Yeah. I think, I think like, for me, like, that's the moment when, like, when, when Cyclops, like, when he loses it, he carks out. Like, mm -hmm. to me, like, that's very, like, that's Cyclops. Like, he's, he's, I feel like he's dealing with this stuff all the time. And then, like the last couple episodes, like he's really been going through it. Yeah, he's just he's fed up. Like he doesn't have the bandwidth to keep it under control like he normally does. Because <laughs> he's, you know, he's he's just like, um, essentially like the poster boy for the X Men. You know what I mean? He's he's just like yeah. essentially like civil rights. Yeah. Uh, leader, right? Mm -hmm. he, he, you know, and so like he has to portray this thing, but he he sounded very Magneto. In that yeah. moment, he was just like, I mean, don't get it twisted. He becomes very Magneto, like in in the comics in the future, which I yeah, again, yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. So to me, like, I mm -hmm. I feel that in Cyclops, like I, I've all like that run. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, because you know, like in in the comics, like that's why that's why Cyclops doesn't really fool with Captain America like that, and yeah. I think. Yeah. Oh man, I'm good. you know, like that's it. Like to me, that's yeah. what's going on in cycle. Like behind everything else, that's what's always circulating in his head. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know, like where are you guys when all this stuff is happening to us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, you yeah. know what? You know what? I'm glad you mentioned Captain America because again, a lot of people's representation of Cyclops over the past 20 years has been in the movies, and he's basically just been mutant. Captain America with way less character development. In fact, yeah. dog, he's a simp. He's been yeah. he is a straight up simp. Yeah. Oh, he, yeah. He, 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 he <laughs> the dude there to make Wolverine. Yeah, exactly. He's the dude there to make Wolverine look cool. He's the guy that you ask, why is she dealing with him when she can have this cool dude with the car? And I love Wolverine, right? But I like that they're giving him the character development that that he deserves. And it isn't, oh, he's just the leader of the X Men, and he talks like this, and he's just like yeah. the leader guy. <laughs> Cyclops is very conflicted. You know, we always have that metaphor. Whether Stan Lee really meant this or not when he, when right. when they created the X Men, we don't know if it's necessarily true. But the X Men has turned into the sort of representation of civil rights, and <clears throat> obviously, you get the whole Magneto, Malcolm, um, um, mm -hmm. Professor Mar Martin, Mar Martin, Mar Martin, Martin, right? Yeah. Which is a simplification, obviously, of I both Martin it. and Malcolm and of the characters. However, right. if we want to go with that, then Cyclops has always been a, a member of Snick or Young Panther. Yeah. Somebody that's that's looking at someone and going, I believe in you to the point that I'm going to follow you blindly. 
and then figuring out maybe I shouldn't have followed this person blindly, but what does that make me at the end of the day? Yeah. Am I a radical? Am I, a, you know, or am I the opposite? Of, what am I? And so the best of Cyclops has always been written that way. He's just never been written that way on screen before. And sometimes yeah. he's not written that way in the comic book. Sometimes the writers of Correct. the books fail him. But when he's written right, it's that speech. It's that, look, oh, for real, for real, I'll, I'm not fooling with none of y'all. Y'all lucky I'm me. I can't see my son's eyes. Yeah. I was abandoned. Right. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I don't know who I had a baby with. Well, I know who I had a baby with, but I don't know who this woman is. <laughs> right. I'm confused, but I have I'm to not be sure which one of them I'm married to. <laughs> I'm not sure. Right, who that, married. yeah. I'm not yeah. sure if I should be the leader of the team. And, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not going to spoil it. But, you know, when we know that there's a certain run going on and we know how that run yeah. concludes. <clears throat> yeah. What happens? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's, it's again, I sit back and I'm going, oh, man, this is about to be so cool because I know what's happening. Right, mm -hmm. and what's going and what well, I don't know if it's going to happen in the show, but I know what happened in the books. Right. And you know, I just love this arc because again, it's real easy to write these people. By the way, I was joking with my brother in law about this show, and we were saying the whole time Wolverine's been chilling in the mansion through like some of the biggest moments. He's been watching right. TV, so they haven't even right. uploaded the guy that we have seen for 20 years be the one that you had to go to go please Wolverine save the day because you're the toughest of us all. So it just, again, it's just, that just speaks to how much care has gone into the characters that yeah, Cyclops can move himself with his optical beams. The first time you really seen his actual power make sense on screen is that fire yeah. coming out of his eyes is a force. All of those things. But seeing these characters kind of get like stripped down to like the most human versions of themselves right. um, is, right. is, is, is cool to see. It's really cool to see. I, look, this show is a, it is a brilliant representation of what the MCU, yeah. what Marvel for <laughs> me as a comic yeah. book reader, but what the MCU has done really, really well is that yeah. the abilities of the people yeah. have always been secondary to the human story of the people. We don't yeah. like Iron Man because of how smart he is for sure. Yeah. He's a yeah. jerk. Yes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like he's a jerk. He yeah. just is, right? Yeah. Captain America is a he's he's a pansy, he's a goody two shoes language. Right. Like he's he's yeah. that. Yeah, but like if we get in a fight, I'm I'm yeah. if I'm picking yeah. teams, <laughs> like, yeah. if, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. It's that it's the conflict of yeah. him having that best friend that is mm -hmm. also this guy who now is supposed, but it wasn't his power. But like, come yeah. on, man, like yo, but he yo, dog, he killed my mom. It, he'll betray I, he's my friend. No, you're You're my friend. friend. All of that, yeah, 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 yeah. The human aspect, yeah, the powers are secondary, yeah. right? Yeah. So even when you take the powers away from someone like Storm and you feel the yeah. pain that she's going through for losing those powers. Yeah, she's still falling in love, and now yeah. she's angry because she fell in love with the person who took her powers from her. her powers from her. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like that conflict, right? Yeah. So, this is a Cyclops who was this close, yeah, to letting himself be talked into walking away, away from being from the, the X Men. Yeah, walking being away love, from love. from following yeah. the professor's dream and taking yeah. it. But it's also like, your whole tight. You telling me the professor wrote a last will and testament and didn't leave the team to me? Yeah. He left the team to our greatest enemy. Yeah. And now you got to be in your head like, I don't understand nothing. Yeah. I don't understand what Professor X was talking yeah. about. I don't know what he was trying to do. Yeah. I don't really understand why he was friends with our greatest enemy. Yeah. Nobody ever broke that down and explained it to me. Yeah. So I am on the outside looking in trying to lead from the inside uh-huh that's crazy yeah that's crazy so here's the thing don't respect slim as a leader <laughs> i don't respect yeah but boy let me tell you something yeah, yeah. No 
as a person. <laughs> We learned that. Nah, early. Scott got hands. We don't learned do that. No, no. Slim <laughs> whooped him in, the, in, in like the second episode. I mean, don't get it twisted. Oh, Storm, Storm put hands on him too. Like that's like, yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. But but here's the thing. Yeah. I have so much respect. Yeah. For what he's going through. Yeah. I'm probably looking forward to his arc. Yeah, more than anything else in this show yeah. right now, yeah. just because of where they have placed him. Yeah, I'm so much more interested in him as a character. I know this character, like I know this character through and through. Yeah, but I didn't care enough to care. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't cool enough for me to care. Right. <clears throat> he didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like he just didn't do it for me. So right. now. In a place where I don't have any choice but to watch his vulnerability. Yeah. Right? And to really, like, kind of take that in and yeah. ex and accept, like, where he is in this moment, in this journey. Like, nah, Slim's like, yeah, he's going through it. Yeah. Going through it. Like, they all are. Yeah. I don't know if you can weigh that against what anybody. Like, yo, <laughs> the joint who just caught him uh -huh. astral cheating. Yeah. Just jaw like planting lips on another man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. Wolverine yeah. had to tell her, relax, sweetheart. Yeah, you forgot the rule. Go, go, yeah, go talk to your man. Yeah. Let me tell you something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, dog, because if I was Wolverine, yeah. we might be crushing in the ocean right now. Like, yeah. I don't know. Because <laughs> that's all because that's what Wolverine wants. That's all he's wanted. Like, and you gotta yep. understand, like, let me let me make it very clear. Wolverine as a character, I don't think people really understand what it means to love Jean Grey. Yeah. To be Wolverine and love Jean Grey. And I'm going to tell you why I say that. That man is like 150 years old. Yeah. <laughs> that man yeah. has met a lot of people. Yeah. He got kids. He has, all loved, over yeah. he has <laughs> loved a lot of women. Yeah. There is nobody that that man in all of his years and experience. Yeah. Has felt the way he has felt about that woman and watching that woman be in love yeah. with a different man while he yeah. knows in his heart she actually does love him. Yep. Mm -hmm. But she stayed with Scott anyway. And it almost feels like a pity play. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also maybe why I don't like Scott. Because <laughs> I do feel like he don't deserve her. <laughs> Partly because it's only like she loves him, but she only loves him because she loved him first. Because she yeah. met him first. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's fair, but it isn't. Because it's really not fair to her or him. It's not yeah. that she don't love Scott, because she does. At least she thinks she does now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you just don't know. Mm. And that's the thing. Like Again, when you talk about how, Jerry, how complicated, how convoluted the X-Men is, right now we're only talking about three people. <laughs> Four, yeah. you count the clone, I guess, but like you're right, yeah. You talking about three people? Here, we ain't even thing, we ain't even get into this episode's magnetic triangle. Yeah, I'm about to say, <laughs> we, 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 we we touch it on a small part of the episode, but a very interesting part of the episode. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's it's the it's the draw it's the the relationship stuff. I think I think this is the relationship stuff is the stuff that the original show wasn't really doing like it, it did relationship stuff, but not like this. No, you know, like Ooh, it wasn't, no. it couldn't be, yeah. it couldn't be done like this. Yeah. Um, this is heavy stuff here. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I feel like that's the stuff that's like, like really new, like new territory for yeah. the, the show. And, and even like, I would say the, the screen version of the franchise, right? Like, yeah, definitely. Um, Cause they, they haven't really done this kind of stuff in the movies either. No, they haven't. There is, I mean, look, there's definitely like X Men Three had Wolverine Gene, yeah. Right? Um, Wolver the, the Wolverine had it the whole, you know, with him and Yurko. Gene, and yeah, but even the Gene thing, like you know, I killed you, and but she's haunting him. It's always been, it hasn't been fleshed out because it's always been more about Wolverine and less about mm -hmm. Cyclops. Again, Cyclops has just been this, like this douchebag that's just there to make Wolverine look cool. 
Damn, yeah, but well, like, don't sell it like like Cyclops isn't a douchebag. No, no, no. I'm not saying he isn't, but in the in the movies, he is. he is. But that's what makes him an interesting character. But in the movies, he is he has no character. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, he exactly. just like yeah, he's a punching bag. Yeah, he's just a guy mm -hmm. like li yeah, literally the entirety <clears throat> of Cyclops in the movies is the last scene on Days of Future Past when he wakes up, over he wakes up in the new timeline. And he sees Cyclops and he jokes with him. And Cyclops is just the square. He's the he's the butt of the joke in the foil of Wolverine's love. That's it. Mm -hmm. sure. That's it. And so, sure. you know, this show, because it's a series, can take time to flesh out a character like Cyclops who has never been fleshed out on screen yeah. ever. I think that there's something to be said for. I've complained about it many a time when you when you look at the the, the movies. Yeah. Um, you know, there are a couple things that happen, right? The 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 original movie wasn't supposed to be about Wolverine, but yeah. Hugh Jackman just did that. And then he yeah. became such a star yeah. that then they had to build the rest of the movies around that character. Yeah. Right? Where like in the comics. You don't have that as an option. You're writing a story. The story is written and you are right. putting it out and you can spend the time with individual characters because you, yeah. you recognize that like this might not be the most popular character, but it's still a lot of people's favorite character. Yeah. We're going to yeah. spend some time doing something with them, developing them and writing something around them. That is an arc that exists while another arc is still happening. So you're not losing yep. all of the attention on somebody else or what else is happening this show is being written in that vein where yeah. like when you're doing the movies, you're like, I got an hour and 30 minutes to get from beginning to end to tell yeah. the whole thing. And so you kind of get stuck only really being able to develop around that one arc. So like in yeah. that second run of films, it was like, Oh, Jennifer Lawrence is playing mystique. Not that big a deal. All of yeah. a sudden, Hunger Games comes out, and she becomes the big, literally yeah, the biggest the actress on the planet. Yeah, yeah. And she's already locked into this contract. Oh, we're making these movies about her. Yeah. And yeah. we're going to make her. And they make her look like her for more of the movie than she looks yeah. like Mystique, right? Yeah. We need to sell mm -hmm. that she's the one in the movie, right? So you are now crafting the business of the art yeah. around the person who's likely to bring in the most <clears> money <throat> and allow you to make another movie. Yeah. In this case... The show is done. Jerry worked on this joint two years ago. And it's <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. It ain't no like, let's put it out and see where it goes. Yeah. It is some of that, but it's like it's it's written. So but whatever it, it, characters they've decided to give us, yeah, and put information in front of it's there. Sure. It's but it's also working because again, going back to what we said earlier, when the MCU is working, there's no star of the MCU. Yeah, Robert Downey right. started the MCU and they would try to, throw, but like, even like you could put Robert Downey in a Spider Man movie and he mm -hmm. still doesn't outshine Spider Man in his own movie just right. because this movie's still about because it's characters. When it works, the characters shine, not the actor, not the star. And this is just like, you know, the writing is brilliant on the show and all of that. You know, I keep pulling out my pencil to, to express that, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also, I think the writing is brilliant because it's saying there's already stuff there that was written already. We don't have to oh, reinvent right. the wheel. Mm -hmm. When you met, right. when you get a Morbius or a <laughs> Madam Web or the, the the comic movies from the early 2000s that we don't like to remember, is because some studio head is going. Let's make up a story. It's the famous John Snap thing with the Superman return. Superman, what's it called? The, yeah. the, the Superman movie. Never came. I don't want to see him in the cape. I don't mm -hmm. want him flying. No, Superman is what he is. Cyclops is who he is. Wolverine is who he is. G. Gray is who she is. Put those characters that so many writers worked so hard on for decades. Put them right. on screen. Right. That's it. It's that simple. All we wanted was the rogue that we get in this show. Yep. In live we action. Did. We didn't All want Anna Paquin. <laughs> I mean, I want no, 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 no. I want no, I'm not about the actress. I'm not talking about the actress. I'm saying I don't want right. to see Anna. I want to see Anna Pack would play Rogue. 
I don't want I want to see Jennifer Lower Lawrence play Mystique like she did in in uh, First Class, not right. I don't want to see Catelyn Catelyn Katniss everything whoever they was in the right movie. right <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So look, this episode is about really this the UN yeah deciding to accept Genosha and recognize Genosha as a part of the UN. Thereby, for the first time, truly recognizing mutants. It's a big deal. Let's invite Magneto out. Yep. Let's get him in front of these people and let's talk to Magneto about becoming the leader. Technically the white king. Yeah. Right? So the black king and the white queen are already there. Yeah. Hellfire Club is in the spot, right? Magneto and Gambit and Rogue, bruh, of the three people to put together, yeah. go yeah. not to the this smartest point. decision, but great yeah. for television. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just want to say, man, listen, getting to, to Genosha, seeing all the mutants, all yeah. the cameos, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, really getting to see Nightcrawler. Like animated the way that Nightcrawler is yeah. animated. Yeah. Joint. Like really doing the callbacks to the old episode. Like yeah. so clean. Yeah. So well done. Um, and you know you're building to something the moment the yeah. episode starts. Yeah. Right. I cannot think of her name, but the reporter. Oh yeah, yeah. And out, she's talking to Beast. She yeah. was like a long time girlfriend of Beast in the comics. Yeah. So like, let's not, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. have their little moment. Even Blue can blush. Like, yeah, yeah Beast, go ahead, get yeah. You, do your thing, bro. Right? <laughs> Beast, a um, ball player. Straight up, like yeah. you know. Um, but we gotta talk about Genosha. And yeah, the offer put on the table to Magneto. Yeah. I don't. Trish Tilly. <laughs> that was the name. Trish Tilly. Yeah. The reporter's name. Yes. Yeah. Magneto don't need Rogue to be his anything. No. Nah. To, to do this. So I need to get, let's get into the head space right now. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of shenanigans? Like, because who are you threatening? Like, to say, I'll do it. I will be yeah. your leader. Yeah. On one condition. Cut. Cut scene. End right. scene. That's your condition? That's the condition. <laughs> I'll do it yeah. if she says she'll do it with me. Well, right. maybe maybe the thought process, because they, they, they alluded to it later, that the UN would not accept, like, it doesn't matter what the Hellfire Club and the, and the council wants. Will the UN accept it? But also, we know that the ultimate goal is to get with Rogue. Magneto's At the end of the chess. day, we have to remember, this is still, the show has done a good job of making you forget that Magneto is Magneto. He is still mostly a selfish person. He is, he he has- Is the, he though? I think so. I've you always, know, I don't think, I don't think, do we have to have like a, Magneto and Killmonger are the same guy. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's a means to an end, right? Like, Magneto's not selfish. Like, he wants for his people to right, be he, safe and recognized, even if it means it happens at the expense of those who would harm his people. But he still wants what he wants, right? He still has that thing. Like, he <clears> has <throat> an eye on her. He wants her. He wants her. And he's doing it in a way like he, he still, yes, he wants all those things you name. That, that's the larger goal. At the end of the day, Rogue is probably one of the more insignificant things. But he can, if he can do this and have Rogue at the same time and win in that way, he will. Because you're right, there's you no that. real reason to make Rogue the queen of Genosha other than I want you. Rogue. And, she, and she's faking. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I think. Okay. Cause, cause Magneto old, bruh. bruh. He been around too. 
<laughs> Slim has Slim has slept with plenty of junk. Yeah, this is indecent proposal all over again. Yeah. <laughs> My man, let me tell you something. She put that thing on Slim. <laughs> My man, it's like he he that that's, that's all. My Look, man they showed saying. the scene. They showed the scene. Remember when they was going through the flashback? He was the one yeah. sleeping. She was the one standing over him. I mean, she put him to sleep. Yeah, listen, don't get it twisted. <laughs> Painter like the Titanic. <laughs> right. <laughs> she put that young thing on my face. doing that. Mm-hmm, yeah. I, I'm at home hey, like, bro, oh, stop that. Like, stop that, bro. Me, don't do that. You're telling me the Southern Bell hit the I do declare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my man was like, listen, because I'm going to tell you, like, again, in the same way I'm in Scott's head right now, I'm yeah. kind of in Magneto's head right now. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. He wants her. Oh, that ain't, yes, but yes, but, run it back. like I this listen, it, it mm-hmm. there are so he been trying to he been going at it whole yeah. time. Yeah, mm-hmm. but Gambit has been in the way whole time. Yeah, just mm-hmm. Gambit's presence. Yeah, even though he throwing shade at Gambit, yeah, even though he's doing little like yeah. I'm I'm calling shorty shorty cereal before you even get to it, dog. Like I'm out yeah. here. Like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm about to throw a card in your face at this dinner yeah. table, bro. Just keep playing yeah. with me. 100 <laughs> percent I'm about to power charge your cape, bro. <laughs> 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 Blow your ass up. <laughs> oh, not his cape though. But look, this is an opportunity to really say. The only thing keeping me mm-hmm. from getting her is him. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's what's in the way. It yeah. is literally the Wolverine, Gene, Scott mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. The only thing really keeping Wolverine from having Gene is this dude, Scott, who yeah. just yeah. happens to be in the way. He don't yeah. necessarily deserve to be in the way. Yeah. He just <laughs> is. Right? Yeah. But like Gotta, but Wolverine like, is not selfish. Wolverine won't do what Magneto do, just, just did, which is man, try to manipulate her into being with him. Yeah, real talk. And here's the thing. Mm-hmm. It worked until it didn't. Right. 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 It worked. Now, I do think if Gambit had pushed back Mm-hmm. She goes, okay, now nah, I'm, I'm it. I'm all in with you. That's yep. what it is, right? She used the same wording that mm-hmm. Magneto used on her. Mm-hmm. You know, if it really will be a great thing for mutant kind, like who am yeah. I? Yes. I also, no, but here's the thing. Well, uh-huh. Let me say something. Yeah. I don't think that's really that manipulative. Okay. And here's why. Again, we're talking about you kind of have to put the powers out of the way. Yeah. But the powers are the whole point in the human side of this connection. Yeah. The only reason why she can sleep with this man, can even touch his skin, can hug him, just just to hold somebody and cry on their shoulder, skin to skin contact, yeah. Is because of the ability that he has, because of his magnetism. <clears throat> the only reason why it works, right? right? It also means it's the only person she's ever been able to be with. It also means it's the only person she technically can be with. Yeah. And have that kind of human connection. Yeah. Right. So I want to put you, I want you to take remove X-Men 97 from 1997 and put yeah. it in the year 2020 and look uh-huh. at what was happening to people. When they lost human connectivity because we were all on lockdown. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now imagine being like that from the time you're 12. Yeah. For the rest of your life. And honestly yeah. believing you're never going to be able to have that kind of a connection with a person. You yeah. are literally watching everyone around you find this connection. Scott is having a baby with two baby mamas, kind of. And you... <laughs> You can't, can't even, even touch nobody. A dude, a dude gets him? hurt. Yeah, a, a character gets hurt later on in the episode. You run to to help him and realize. Yeah, yeah. So let's so think about this. 
what we're considering to be selfish for Magneto mm -hmm. is in some manner a gift to Rogue. Because in some manner, it has to feel like it's meant to be. Right. It has mm -hmm. to. When you live in this kind of world, and you're like for all, listen, for all of us who are pulling for Rogue and Gambit, the reality of it is it can't. Right. Right. If you're her, and for in some ways, even if you're Magneto, you have to believe in some portion of your heart and soul that it's meant to be because you're the only person who they can have that relationship with. Think for a second. Yes, but that's not yeah, what I like. The, I mean, in vitro fertilization aside or whatever, right? The only person Roe could ever have a baby with that we know of is Magneto. That's it. Yeah. And can you Maybe. imagine what that should be like? But like, yeah, yeah. but like, right. so, so, and then also, here's Gambit selfless. Gambit is actually probably the most selfish. Uh -huh. Of the characters in terms of the way that they're introduced, who he is, yeah. trickster, you know, Playboy, like all that yeah. kind of stuff. Andrew, How, yeah. Yeah. However, this is a man who's listening to what she's saying and is hearing the excuse she's, mm -hmm. what about it being great for, for mutants? He don't care about none of that. Yeah. What he cares about <laughs> is that she wants to be able to touch someone. And yeah. the only person she can touch is him. And he Buddy. reluctantly is willing to give that. Is willing but he, to say, but he also told her, "I wager he' going to break your heart." One hundred percent. He said that because ultimately, that's what Mag in, in the imaginary world where they go on, that's what Magneto would do. Well, again, she already told when she was telling him the story about what it was between mm, yeah. them. She already told him, like, I left not because I didn't care about him or because it didn't work, or because it didn't feel like it was right. Yeah. I left because of how, again, she left because of how evil, like how yeah. vindictive, how like how he was willing to do anything to yes. get things to go the way that he wanted, right? Right? Yeah. Like by any means necessary. That was a problem for her. This is a Magneto, though, who is now stepping into Charles' <clears throat> shoes and is not moving by any means necessary. This is a Magneto who turned himself in when he literally could have took them helicopters and chopped them dudes' heads off with they blaze, and they was like, yes. we got plastic guns. Mm -hmm. Yes, but this is also a Magneto that tried to bag her by any means necessary. <laughs> Listen, let me And let me just say, under the circumstances, if the opportunity presented itself, <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> what I do That's all I'm saying. I'd be dead. All oh, right, right, yeah, yeah, we'd be life, life force sucked out. Dude, Not if you was I just, you know, though. I just want to say no, that I, I love that I that we're talking about the X Men, but like this is this is it, right? You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the soap mm. opera. Yeah, the, the soap opera aspect of it, like this. Yeah. Is, Speaking to the soap opera and like cinnamonness yeah. of it, what Gabe was saying when they was having that conversation in front of the fireplace, the yeah. cards Gambit was throwing in the uh, fireplace. The last one was the Queen of Hearts. Yeah, the Queen of Hearts. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Yeah, that, that that was just so dope. Like just storytelling, all that kind of stuff. Like yeah, I and even man. what she said to him, and it's funny we are talking about this to your point, Jerry, because we haven't even gotten to the uh, uh, okay. <laughs> but, but you know, uh, I'll say my last point on this is that. Uh, what he said to her, what she said to him was so real. She was like, everything you touch, you light up, but you yeah. never lit me up. And that's, that's just like, tough. again, that's just like, that's adult conversation. That's yeah. adult conversation. And it's, and it's, 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 yes, yeah, it was, you know, we could sit here and debate the, the Magneto portion of it because it's so good. Because there is no yeah, answer for real. The human aspect of it. Yeah. Though. You can't, how yeah. could you deny her? Yeah. If put yourself in Gamba's shoes, deny her that skin to yep. skin contact. Yeah. Be that guy. Yeah. She'll resent you for the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Period. Yeah. yeah. Not, it, there can't be anything with the two of you because yeah. that's that's where you, you are. Her, yeah, you didn't love something to let it go. Yeah. And then it came back. It tried to come back. Yeah. Let's talk about the comeback. Let's get to it. <laughs> Oh let's get to that man! Let's look, all of that was just let's let's look, Jerry. 
I'm sure you're familiar with the concept of too good to be true. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, this episode is the definition of too good to be true. Oh man. There is a a, a kaiju, bro. <laughs> there is a sentinel kaiju. Yeah. On the loose. Yeah, everything you want. I'm <laughs> killing everybody. And let yeah. me just say Cass is getting evaporated, bro. Yeah, buddy. Didn't see it coming, Great did you? Dusted. <laughs> and it ain't the dust that you can just snap back, bro. This is like, <laughs> yeah, it's real out here. Yeah, when it matters, we're gonna put it all on the line. So here mm-hmm. we go, Magneto. Let me say something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've always been a Magneto fan. Yeah, I think Magneto is one of the greatest villains, yes, sir, ever written. I think yes, he's one of sure. the greatest characters ever written. Yeah, sure. I never seen a man. Take slavery back, yeah. whipping the oppressor with a train, bro. Change <laughs> <over. was> whipping, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> slim, yeah. yeah. But yeah, can I ask a question real quick? Yeah, just to backtrack yeah. a couple of steps. Yeah, There's something I, I thought was interesting. One less to do with the story, and, and more to do with what I thought may have been just like a choice, and two mm-hmm. to do with the story in the larger MCU. Um, I think you all know. so the watcher oh, yeah. being there. Oh, the I was gonna get to that, it. Oh, okay. So I want to jump. <laughs> sure. I'll leave that be. I'll leave that be. Both of oh, my questions sure. have to do with that. So then I'll we can we oh, can we get definitely them. gonna get into that. Yeah, let's get okay. It's not gonna take that long. All right, yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What we what we have to talk about, yeah, I'm sure is the thing that sin wants to avoid the most. <laughs> no, but Sin's it is something the yes. favorite X Men mm-hmm. are Gambit. And wrote 100 yeah. percent always have yeah. been diehard right. fans. My favorite yeah. X-Men, my favorite Marvel characters. Yes. Yeah. And I tried to warn you. <laughs> you did. I did, did before this episode. Let me say if you're gonna go out, oh boy. Bro, yeah, this is the way. This is this is it. Like a motherfucking G. I'm sorry, I gotta put it that way. <laughs> I have to put it that way. I'm sorry. Man, like buddy. I am I am watching this thing, right? And I'm watching the whole episode and everything. And, and everybody, I didn't catch it the day of. I caught it like mm-hmm. the day after. But of course, mm-hmm. everybody online, I didn't know what was gonna happen. Mm-hmm. But I knew a lot of people died. Yeah. Because the way everybody was talking about it, oh my God, oh my God. So I'm expecting this Game of Thrones red wedding kind of thing about to happen, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole episode, I'm enjoying the hell out of this episode from beginning to end. But I'm Mm -hmm. I'm on my ears like, okay, like the the ball's going to drop at any second here and everybody's going to start dying. So when things start, as soon as Cable comes into the picture, you know, you got to get out of here, whatever. I'm like, all right, that's happening, whatever it is. Madness, explosions, people dying. I'm like, all right, this ain't this Game of Thrones I like. People was hyping this up. Yeah. I didn't know what was coming just yet. I'm yeah. like, yeah, hyping this up. You know, I'm like, okay, but I'm digging it. Like yeah. you said, Magneto's whooping people with whooping sentinels with trains and everything. I'm like, oh, this yeah. is fire. They but shall be avenged. The oh, later man. it gets into this chaos that's happening, mm-hmm. and it kind of starts to focus with those looks between those three, between yeah. what is mm-hmm. happening. I start sitting up a little bit, like, hey, this like. This is the Game of Thrones stuff I was kind of looking for when yeah. they really getting into without too much of the blood and gore. But like, okay, yeah. like y'all are really telling the story during all this chaos. And bro, I'm sorry, but when she's when Magneto gets blasted to Kingdom Come mm-hmm. <laughs> and she gets that rage mode and takes off. Boy, yeah. boy, it gets so anime. It oh, gets so oh anime. Gosh, it was so it really fire. Does. It was so fire. Oh my god. It, it really does. Anime. Yeah. Gamma hops on the bike. You charge it up to kick her out of the mm-hmm. way so she don't yeah. get blasted. Mm-hmm. And then my man runs head on to fight that joint by himself. And I, I'm not even lying to you, Gage. The second I, I'm, I'm locked in, anime style, yeah. what's going on? The second he jumped and got stabbed, I'm at work. For the first time ever, if I've been at this job, I yelled out loud, oh shit, <laughs> on my phone. I, like loud, as, and I could not breathe for a second. And the first thing that popped in my mind, I was like, oh, they're killing him. Because like yeah. everybody's hyped online, I was like, "Oh my god, my yeah. guy's about to die!" No, 
No, yeah. no, 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 no. It's just mm-hmm. how he went out and the scene afterwards the road, just like, oh, my oh man, I yeah, was, that was, I was, yeah. Yeah, I was done with this episode. I was done with yeah. this episode, but it was Bro, so she said, I can't feel told. you. I can't feel you. Oh my gosh, that hurts so bad. Oh. Yeah. You talking Bro, about listen. cinema and storytelling, yeah. bruh? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like outside of the chaos and the action, just yeah, that was the storytelling. Can I, those can I, I'm gonna tell you a little secret, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So have y'all seen Invincible? Y'all seen the, the Yeah, the I, I love Invincible. Y'all watch- are you yeah. done with Invincible? I haven't seen I haven't seen the newest season, but I treat yourself. You can't you can't surprise me with Invincible. Yeah, well, I yeah. here's the thing. Yeah. So there is a there's a scene in one of the episodes of the second half of Invincible mm-hmm. where they're talking about how in animation they like cut yeah. corners so they yeah. can save up to you know whatever. And I'll be honest, yeah. though, I was watching this joint, and I was like, mm-hmm. mm, some of this is just not quite clicking. Like it just seems yeah. like some of the animation isn't quite there. It don't seem like they animating on like, mm-hmm. you know, like they kind of like there's a lot of still shots. Like I'm just mm-hmm. I'm like they must be saving up. Like mm-hmm. something getting ready to go down. Budget. Mm-hmm. Hey, bro. Let me tell you something. When that budget kick in, yeah, but that's what kick in. Yeah, that that man, is, is Ooh, incredible. Boy, and it yeah. ain't. But listen, it ain't just the anime. I'm talking about it's the audio, bro. I don't know what yeah. y'all listening through. No, nah, I understand, I had bro. I'm yeah, I tell you, yeah, the it was sound. cinematic. It was cinematic. The yeah, there's nothing scarier than a sentinel hunting for a mutant, bro. Yeah, the sound <laughs> yeah, buddy, of a sentinel, yeah. and this joint is just dropping like hundreds of sentinels. Yeah. like yeah. they just coming from everywhere, and yeah. I'm like, dog. There's yeah. nowhere to go, and these are the like all these brambles got all the powers. Yeah, they got all the powers on this on this yeah. one little island. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they should be able to fight. And they could Magneto when Magneto went like yo, when that joint turned and was like Omega level threat detected. Yeah. I said, Oh, it's about to go down. <laughs> yeah, it's can we about talk about that for a second? Yes, I thought yes. of a great detail in that. At least I think this is what happened, right. So he has Leech, right? His name's Leech. Yeah. Mark, yeah. Mm-hmm. Holding on to him, which Leech's mm-hmm. powers is he takes your power. He other mutants' powers. Yep. So Magneto's trying to hold off this super kaiju sentinel with all, he and he's at like 50%. And he right. really can't because he's trying to protect somebody yeah. who's, literally who's literally taking his power his from power him. Because he's scared. Yep. Yep. It's <sighs> crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, and literally, yeah, my man. This is the same dude who was like, We don't have to be scared no more. Yeah, because Magneto said you yep. will never be afraid again. Yeah, and now my man is afraid. Yep, and he's draining the power of the one person who can, yep, who can protect him and save him. It is so ironic. Yeah, it is the craziest irony written in yeah. to that moment. Yeah, and it's like it's almost like Rogue knows it. You yeah, know what I mean, and she's like, dog. And then when he uses the last little bit of energy mm-hmm. he has yeah. to protect them, yeah, to like mm-hmm. wrap them in metal yeah. and shield them, yeah. only enough for her to be able to see yep. directly out to see what's happening. No yep. words, just yep. looks and glances. Beautiful. Yep. Dog, when she busts yep. that thing open, I say, oh, it's yep. oh, wow. <laughs> she, <laughs> somebody. she get her hands on that joint. It's <laughs> over, yep. bro. Yep. And when hey, listen, I don't know. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I don't know how Remy yeah. turn around and got that bite going fast enough to catch her. I'm calling shenanigans a little. Bit. Steve, 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 that's all. Calling shenanigans. Yeah, yeah. It's entertainment. I don't, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I don't even care. Yeah, 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 don't worry about it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because for real, the way she flew out that joint, he was not catching her on that bite. Let me just yeah. make that clear. The power of love. <laughs> um, the watcher. Yeah. Hey, dog, this whole joint fake. <laughs> you said, this whole yeah. joint is fake, so, dog. So that's what. So so that's why I was going to ask. Um. So cable shows up. Mm-hmm. You know, basically, you could tell this has happened before. He goes, mm-hmm. "Oh no, not again!" Another beautiful moment with him and, and Madeline. 
yeah. looking in his eyes, you know, realizing, oh, my son, sorry, mom. Oh, you no, not it. again. Yeah. Clearly, he's been trying to stop this a couple of times, right? Mm -hmm. um, I got one uh, outside the show question, just like a character choice, actor yeah. choice. Did that actor, I know it wasn't him, did that actor sound like Josh Brolin to you guys? And less like the cable from the old um, show and more like, like I know it wasn't Josh Brolin, but did he sound different? Well, did he, he didn't sound because the old the cable from the original show was kind of like a kind of like a Clint Eastwood kind of yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah. one he sounded a little more like Deadpool. I'm not saying it was Deadpool cable. The voice actor did Gambit on the original animated series. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not the most important thing. Just yeah, something uh, this is, yeah. Chris Pine. I mean, yeah. look. Putting the watcher in there just yeah. tells me that you really do have a greater link yeah. to the outer, yeah, you know, MCU to the greater MCU, right? Like that's where yeah. I'm at, and I'm yeah. like, you know, it's all getting undone in some manner, right? Yeah. It's all getting undone. <laughs> like this. Just like, like this I don't even like, yeah, like, like yeah. here's the thing, like when I, I'm not even gonna lie, like I saw it and I was like, yeah, all right, if they gonna yep. kill Slim. Something, yeah, something bad um, is happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they're gonna kill Slim, that's cool. Only because I saw my man in the stars. Like I literally, when I was yeah. watching that joint, I said, "Hold tight, yeah. pause, run it back, pause again." I sent you a picture, sin. Yeah, I sent you a picture. I sent a picture to the group chat, and I was just like, "So in my head." It's all fake. It's mm. all fake, bro. If like, I hate James not dead, then he'll be back. Put like this, he'll be back. Yeah, be like, between like that be or cable like, like, trying to fix stuff, it'll yeah, it, it yeah. shocking as hell for, for an episode, but I full believe that yeah, somehow yeah. things so will get fixed or whatever, whatever. Yeah. What has to happen is you have to be so tactful about how this is handled going forward because. Something that was that well done, mm -hmm. that important, that poignant, you can't make it feel like it didn't matter. Right. So the storytelling going forward has to be, yes, we can undo this. Yes, Cable is traveling back and forth from the future. Mm -hmm. Yes, technically, Bishop came to stop a traitor. That traitor is supposed to be Gambit. Right. We're gonna do some. It's gonna be some shenanigations going yeah. forward. That like the watcher, the watcher's position in this for me yeah. is like, oh, all right, we in a what if scenario. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I say like you know, the watcher. Like it's canon. Yeah, it's canon, but it's not like it. Listen, the fact that it, <clears throat> it, like, it can be completely canon and it happens and, and that's it. It is what it is in this world. Gambit yeah. is dead in this reality, in this world. Yeah, in this, in this world. world. Right. I mean, because again, what, what's what's happening, the reason why I thought it was interesting that they put the Watcher in this episode shows you that it is connected to the larger MCU with the sick, with the, you know, oh, yeah. but but it's but it's it's yeah. I just wonder what's going to happen. I just I'm just I curious as to what's the long showing up in Deadpool. Yeah, and Wolverine, easy. I yeah. have to watch it first, even if it's not live action. Yeah, right. Because if they are getting ready to really do a battle world and take right. these these universes that exist, yeah. They're all canon. Yeah. And now we're gonna crash them all into this one universe, and you yeah. see, like in the trailer, and like, yeah, you know, they're fighting with the 20th Century Fox joint, falling behind yeah. them, and all that kind of Power stuff. Like, it's there. So yeah, so easy for an animated version of those characters to show up in here, in the same yeah. way that that kind of stuff happens in Spider Verse, right? You see mm -hmm. live action versions of characters from the Spider Man universe, yeah, says right in in Spider Verse, right? So. Those things being what they are, the watcher showing up tells me it's canon. Yeah, it happened, but it's not the only reality, and therefore, like, yeah, 
be okay, right? Like you, you yeah. like your favorite person is still gonna be around, or you know whatever it is. And this is yeah. one of many ways that this could have played out. Yeah, that's what yeah. that says to me. Yeah, that's where I'm at now. I could be wrong, and it happens, but not a lot. Like I'm not like I'm not, I'm not usually like super wrong. <laughs> like I've been wrong. <laughs> Make predictions that are like I don't like super shoot for the stars with these joints. I just yeah. that's that's what the watcher does. That's yeah. his job, yeah. right? He watches, and he's not supposed to intervene, but yeah. he always does. Like that's his yeah. job. Yeah, that's his position. Know your role, <laughs> yeah. right? If <laughs> If the Undertaker can show up <laughs> and choke slam the rock, yeah, Maybe that's a completely happen. different universe from what yeah. anybody expected to yeah. happen. Yeah, I, you know, that's where I'm at. I'm yeah. so this episode has me so amped for the next episode. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, and here's what I want to say. That is that is magical writing and storytelling that generally yeah. does not exist anymore because most of what you get now is like, here it is, binge it all. Yeah, You don't have to wait for the next episode. You don't have to yeah. wait for next week. Yeah. Let me give you something and write it so that you have something to talk about for seven days. Yeah. Right? Try to avoid social media. Stay away from the water cooler. Don't whatever yep. if you haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler Pay attention boys, to Kendrick and them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. That's brilliant to me. Yes. If 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 what happened in this episode happened and I hadn't seen the watcher. Yeah. It's not that I'm less interested yeah. in the next episode. It's just that because I saw it, I'm way more like it's not even about the next episode now. Yeah. I'm like I'm interested oh, in Deadpool. Day, I'm about to be a problem. Yeah, no, you know that's what I'm saying. I'm like, yes, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Putting so you all, I'm on this show for a reason. I've been the guy <laughs> talking about the X-Men on you guys' program forever. Okay, I've been Ever. waiting yeah. for this forever because I know how good the X-Men are. So thank mm -hmm. you, Gary, for, for <laughs> giving me, me X-Men. Okay, now um I, I I like that this has been like canonized by involving the watcher. And again, it's not that so much about like because I'm already excited about what's happening in the next episode. I was excited from episode one, but right now I'm excited and I've been excited about Deadpool and Wolverine, obviously, but I'm also excited about what comes after Deadpool and Wolverine. What happens yep. in Fantastic Four? What happens? So it just to me, this series is giving the MCU a much needed jolt. Of oh yeah, excitement and coolness, yeah. you know. Um, and I, and I think cool. you know, again, you know, most people will see the watcher up there and 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 not think anything of it, probably didn't even see him. But if you're one of us, you saw yeah. him and you know what's up, right? So, yeah, it, it doesn't take away from what happened. I still felt it, like Sin said, like mm. seeing Gambit get stabbed, watching that the whole I can't feel you, yeah. don't be afraid, all of that. I'm sorry, mom. All that stuff still hits, but it's just interesting from an MCU standpoint of, yeah. oh, okay, what are they doing here? This isn't just a, a cartoon that's just on that that's cool, a cool thing to do. This potentially means something, and I think that's yeah. cool because they didn't have to do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, and we're gonna close out. I think <laughs> I think this is one of the best episodes of television ever made. Oh man! No, I agree with you. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in the I've same ball a lot of TV. I agree with you, brother. Yeah, I think this is one of the best episodes yeah. of television yes. ever made. Yeah, period. Like it just. I think if you have never watched, if you don't know anything mm -hmm. about X Men, if you never watched the old series and yeah. you didn't watch the first four episodes of this. And you watch this episode, yeah. You in, yeah. you're in. <laughs> oh, you're running it back the second that thing went off. Yeah, no, oh, I'm on episode it. one. It's not you an exaggeration. Like, yeah, I'm this joint. 
bruh. I, you know what? I didn't, I did not actually work on this episode, but on behalf of the team, I'm just gonna say thank you. No, I'm just gonna say, yeah, thank you. No, listen, man, I'm, I'm, I was trying not to say that on here because, again, I'm the X Men guy, right? So it's not hard to excite me. <laughs> no, I, I, I get you. That's like right? me championing this episode because a big portion of it is about Rogan Gambit. Yeah, so I completely right. get where you're coming from. Yeah, like I'm the X Men guy. I have debated these dudes on certain X Men movies. I've been excited about mm -hmm. them. Not mm -hmm. so much people that you know, but so I've been avoiding saying that. But it, no, I I really believe like that's why I said like when the MC I keep saying the MCU when the MCU right. is good it feels oh, like God. this, mm -hmm. and and this isn't just like you know some of the kind of like fan servicey great moments like on your left cap. Which is a great yeah, moment, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. don't get me wrong, it's a great <laughs> moment, but it's more like it's akin to just like, just like it's a, it's a combination of great storytelling. And then if you're an X Men fan, you know, there's even little stuff in this episode beyond like the big climax that happens at the end. Mm -hmm. Little stuff that like calls back to what's happening now, like the council. Even though I know you know the Genosha story is mm -hmm. a storyline, but like it reminds me of what's going on with Krakoa right now. Some of the people right. that are yeah. on the council are on the Krakoa yep. council. Yep. You know what it's I mean? Crazy. It's just like it's just the way they. Yeah, it was. It's a speaking great, of that little stuff you're talking about, yeah. Adam. That just helped mm -hmm. elevate the episode. The mm -hmm. closeout of the episode I thought was brilliant. Just yeah. cutting to black, yep. you hear crying saying, "I can't um, sing no music. more." That yeah, that was. It yeah. was playing the X Men theme, yes. slow yeah. with just the piano. Bro. Yeah, I was like, really hey, no. yeah. they really took this joint out on some like, yeah. oh, everybody yeah. just got dusted. Yep, it yeah, couldn't have just mean, dusted it everybody. Like that. It felt like we just met. We yeah. just met Black Panther. I know they ain't just dust my man. <laughs> yeah. you think? Peter Parker yeah. just turned the dust in Iron Man hand yeah. and yeah. Iron Man stuff on the planet. Like what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bro. Yo. I mean, again, you mentioned Sin, you mentioned the, the, the red wedding. Like when the red wedding ends, oh my god, this epic Game of Thrones music, it's just yep, black it's just... with what the hell is gonna happen next? You just killed like three of the main characters of the series. Yes, yeah. what yeah. the series was about, people thought the series was about this family. They're like dead. that <laughs> <laughs> they're gone. That's a that's a I again I after watching this episode, I went to my kids yeah. and was like, "Yeah, I might have to watch X Men. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't watched any. Yeah, they yeah. haven't watched any of them. Yeah, like yo, yeah, I need yeah. to be watching this X Men, like for real. Um, man. Yeah, man. Can it's you great. imagine the first? The first? I want to say it was like inside. I don't know. Two, three weeks of me being on the team." Is when I found out about all of this stuff. Like oh. it hadn't been boarded. It was yeah. just like, yo, this is this is happening. Mm. I was just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Hey, go listen. Yeah. Let me tell you something about keeping secrets for two years straight. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, bro. Cause like, if I ever need somebody to just like, listen, I gotta tell you something. You can't yeah. say nothing to nobody. <laughs> I'm, Jerry, the first Man, person I'm calling. That's the guy. Like straight up, yeah, yeah. like lock jaw, bro. Like, yeah. like lock jaw, bro. Yeah. Um, Adam, thank you for joining this episode. Tell the people again where they can go Adam, find man. you. MSR underscore Adam on all social platforms. MSR underscore Adam, the Butler Did It podcast hub on YouTube. You can find what are those? You can find Sneaks in the City. You can find the Butler Did It podcast proper and whatever else I decide to throw up on there, man. Um, check me out, follow me. Thank you for having me on this one, man. Appreciate of course, it. Thank you, bro. Jerry, tell the folks how they can find you and keep track of what you got going on. You're a busy guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can find me on um Instagram for the most part, the franchise with a Z art. Um, you can Google me, Jerry Gaylord, just Google it, you'll find me. Um, I think my next, uh, conventions are going to be, um, wow. I'm doing one in Ontario, California. I think it's Com Comic-Con Revolution. I'll be, okay. um, in San Diego Comic-Con, probably mm -hmm. just walking around. We'll see about that. Maybe I'll be doing some stuff with DC, okay. um, you know, fun stuff like that. And then, uh, I think it was recently announced I'll be at the uncanny experience 
mm-hmm. in um, uh, September. So that's that's like a, a newer convention, like just about the X Men. It's, it's nice. gonna be a whole thing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's dope, man. Uh, keep making moves. I'm looking forward to talking with you, gentlemen, next week. Yeah. About the next episode. Um, look, y'all already know what it is. Lotus Nights crew, spoiler boys in the house. We'll be back. We got some other stuff we gotta spoil. I guess we're gonna spoil Fallout. <laughs> I guess we're gonna spoil Fallout. Um, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna keep making moves. We're gonna keep doing this. Keep tuning in, um, listening on your podcast services wherever you, wherever you happen to get it. We're there. Uh, we appreciate y'all. We're out. Toodles and lose. Loading snacks. Ow, ow.